Capacitors and inductors are similar in many ways. There are parallels to the way they behave because of the fact that they act on the derivative of a particular of a particular aspect, either the voltage or the inductance. So we're going to make a chart and take a look at these. And so if we have, let's put a line here and a line here. And on this side, we'll put capacitance. On this side, we'll put inductance with L. And over here, we'll talk about the properties. So let's just remind ourselves of the equations that govern them. So this is C capacitance times V dot is equal to I current. For an inductor, it looks very similar, but it's a little, it's basically reversed. It's V is equal to L I dot. And so you can see that there's a parallel structure here. A capacitor, it has the, the, the current flowing through a capacitor is proportional to the rate of change of voltage that it experiences. And similarly, the rate, uh, the voltage across an inductor is proportional to the rate of change of current. They're, mirror, they're mirrored components in this because one is just relating, again, we're relating voltage and, and, and current, but it's just a matter of what is being taken the derivative of. So with these types of equations, it, it can be a little difficult to make sense of it. So it's often easy to think about what a capacitor is, appears as a, as a open, right? A, a, a break in the wire to versus a, what it appears as a short. And similarly and with inductors, they each behave differently to, to changes or not changes in properties. So we'll, we'll say the word, we'll use the term um, permits And by permits, we're, we're basically meaning that it's, you can think of it as being a uh, short. A short is just a wire that's connected. So you have a wire and it's connected to another wire. That's a short, right? Something that effectively has no resistance, no, no impact on volt on current flow. So a capacitor permits or appears to be a short in the situation of high frequency. High frequency signals. We can also call these AC, right? And AC where the frequency component of it, a sine wave, right? That's what high frequency means, but the sine wave is large. Now let's talk about this second category here. What is blocked and this is open, right? The term for blocking is actually open. A capacitor appears like an open circuit when an open circuit simply means you have a wire and you have another wire and the two are not connected, right? Effectively, there is infinite resistance here. So you can think about this as, for a short, as R equaling zero, and here you can think about R equaling infinity. Now, there's no such thing as these actually existing, but these are the limit cases. And capacitors block low frequencies. Or DC. And this makes sense, right? Because we talked about this in the capacitor video. If you are charging up a capacitor, right, you're applying some fixed non-changing voltage to this, 
right? If this, the change in voltage, right? That's what DC means. Low frequency means that change isn't, there's very little change. It's about static all the time. Then what are you going to see in terms of current flow? You're going to see no current flow or very little current flow. That's why for DC signals for a voltage that is not changing for a fixed pressure, if you're using the water analogy, the current flow through a capacitor is zero or very close to zero. It appears like it's an open. Now let's make the same, the same conclusions for, uh, for an inductor. An inductor, these are basically reversed for the inductor. A, an inductor permits DC, permits low frequency, permits DC signals, and is and blocks high frequency AC signals. Now, why is this the case? Well, again, if we think about our water analogy where the inductor is this water wheel that spins with the current flow, then if you have a low frequency signal, all that means is you're applying a fixed pressure, a fixed voltage potential across the component, the water wheel is going to spin and it's going to spin freely. It's going to continue to spin freely. So the change in current in that situation is zero because again, we're just applying a fixed amount of potential. And if you have a fixed potential on a, resi on a, on a, on a signal uh, across a, a line with a fixed resistance, then you're just going to get a fixed current flowing through it. And if the current is the change in current is zero, then your change in voltage is going to be zero. And that's why uh, a, 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 an inductor will appear to be a short in the situation of DC or low frequency. On the other hand, in the situation of high frequency or an AC signal, something that's changing very quickly, uh, an inductor will appear like an open, right? Or will resist that change. Why? Because look, delta I here is non-zero. It's quite, could be quite large. And then V is going to be large. There's going to be a large drop against that, right? The water wheel is going to take time for it to adjust and ramp up or ramp down. So in reality, capacitors and inductors are mirror, are mirror components where one treats the change in velocity, uh, change in voltage as the key component, and the other changes, the other treats the changes in current as the key component. And if you can keep this in mind and you keep these ideas about what it permits and what it blocks, what the open and short representations are, then your intuition for, for how these components behave uh, becomes a lot easier.